Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. One, two, three. I'm not lying. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. Really nice meeting you guys. Hey tea sippers, so I had wanted to do a live stream earlier today but I was not feeling too good so I ended up taking a nap and now it's pretty late. So I just wanted to do some more updates on this whole Diddy situation. So I'm sure you guys all know by now that Diddy was denied bond and they are going to hold him in jail uh, for the time being. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip and I also want you guys to see what his lawyer had to say about the situation as well and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. We begin with that breaking news here at 6 today. A judge orders Sean Diddy Combs held without bail. He pleaded not guilty to racketeering, conspiracy, and sex trafficking charges following a bombshell indictment today. Alice Gaynor covers courts and joins us now live from Lower Manhattan with all the new details. Alice. Christine, Sean Diddy Combs himself entered the not guilty plea. He walked into the courtroom with a very serious expression. He scanned the room. He had about 12 family members and friends there to support him. Otherwise, the room was basically attorneys and members of the press. The two sides essentially litigated the case when they were making the argument for bail or no bail. Prosecutors say he's a flight risk. He's an extreme danger to the community. He's a serial abuser, they say, and a serial obstructor. His attorney argued that he had earned trust, earned the trust of the court and of the judge because he flew to New York in anticipation of being arrested and wanted to turn himself in. They also mentioned that he's in the process of trying to sell his plane. He handed over his passports to his attorneys, but the judge ruled he be held without bail. Sean Diddy Combs is accused of creating a criminal enterprise of using employees, resources, and influence to allegedly carry out crimes including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. That employees like security staff, household staff, personal assistants, and high-ranking supervisors allegedly helped facilitate and cover up his abuse and sex escapades never intervening. Other arrests could be coming. I'm not taking anything off the table. The previously reported March 2016 Los Angeles hotel video showing Diddy attacking then-girlfriend singer Cassie was referenced in the indictment. A member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. The indictment alleges Diddy abused people for decades, verbally, emotionally, physically, and sexually. He's accused of manipulating women to participate in highly orchestrated performances of sexual activity with male commercial sex workers. These elaborate sex performances were referred to as freak-offs, which Combs is accused of arranging, directing, and recording. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics. He's accused of sometimes giving people drugs like cocaine, oxycodone, and ketamine, to name a few, controlling their careers, using money and threats, allegedly to get what he wanted. During these so-called freak-offs and at other times, it's alleged he hit, kicked, and threw objects at and dragged victims. Some injuries took days or weeks to heal, and he allegedly used the recordings of them as collateral. In March 2024, during searches of his Miami and L.A. homes, law enforcement seized drugs and more than 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant, guns, ammo, and three AR-15s with the serial numbers defaced. His attorney says they are not his guns. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. We're appealing the, the, the decision to hold him without bail. Combs faces a minimum of 15 years behind bars, up to life in prison if convicted on these three felony counts. His attorney says he is fighting the no bail ruling today. There is a bail appeal hearing scheduled for tomorrow, Christine.
All right, some shocking allegations there, Alice. Thank you for that update. Diddy's legal troubles first picked up steam last year. He has faced a number of lawsuits since then, filed by an unnamed music producer to former college student Joy Dickerson, and most recently, one of the singers from the band Danity Kane, Don Richard. Now, the first lawsuit came in November of 2023 from Diddy's ex-girlfriend, singer Cassie, alleging years of abuse and rape. The two parties settled the next day. And then in March, federal agents raided his homes in Miami and LA. In May, video surfaced showing Combs attacking Cassie in an LA hotel in 2016. He publicly apologized days later. In June, Combs returned his key to the city at the request of Mayor Adams. All of this now leading up to his arrest yesterday. Do stay with CBS News New York. We brought you the news conference live when that indictment was unsealed earlier today. And you can read the entire document on CBSNewYork.com. So we want to know, right, who's going to be watching Jess, Jesse and Delilah? Everybody down in front. Who's going to be watching right. the kids? All right. So, uh, so this, was, this was the first step. We have, we, have, uh, we have a bail appeal scheduled for tomorrow at 3.30 in front of Judge Carter, the district judge assigned to this case. Um, I think that, that we, 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 we made the points that we've been wanting to make. Um, I think it came out. Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. Uh, he came to New York to establish his innocence. He's not afraid. He's not afraid of the charges. There's nothing that the government said in their presentation today that changes anyone's mind about anything. He's been looking forward to this day. He's been looking forward to clearing his name, and he's going to clear his name. Uh, and we're going to stand by his side as, as he does. We believe in him wholeheartedly. Um, he didn't do these things. This was a 10-year relationship. There's no coercion. There's no crime. There's basically just you know, so someone who brought a civil case and now uh, is, is finding themselves as a, w a witness in a, in a criminal case. And we're going to fight this case uh, with everything we have, as is he. And eventually, he's going to be shown to be innocent. Um, and so tomorrow we fight again, and we fight. We'll fight every day until we don't have to fight anymore. Why did he last night and said it today as planned? I I don't know. I, the question is why did it happen last night instead of today? I I don't know the answer to that question. We we we. I just want to make one point very clear. We 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 have no power. All we can do is show good faith. He got on a plane and he came here. And if he stayed here for one day before the case started, or for one year before the case started. He was going to stay as long as he needed to stay. It ends up being only 12 days. That's fine. That's what the government wanted to do. The government didn't want him to turn himself in. He came here to turn himself in. Why doesn't the government want him to turn himself in? Because then they can't ask for detention. So they go and they arrest him. They arrest the guy who came to New York to turn himself in. But we are going to make all these points again, again tomorrow, and we'll make him as much as we can until we get him out. So that's all I have. Yeah, like tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wait, what, what was the question? No bail. We're appealing. No, we're, no bail. Yeah, we're no bail. No bail. He's no, detained. We're, we're appealing it. Oh, I'm sorry. We are we're appealing the, the, the decision to hold him without bail. When's the next court appearance? Tomorrow at 3.30. Three thirty. Uh -huh. Same place. Will he be here? Will he be here? Bail, bail appeal. Bail appeal. Bail appeal tomorrow at 3.30. Same courtroom. Different judge. He's, he's, doing, he's doing fine. He's a fighter. He's a fighter, and he's going to fight this. All right, I'm going to go. Thank, you. Thank you. I, I, I don't get into that stuff. Okay. How are the twins? Are they doing okay? Every, every, every All right, so you guys just saw those news clips. Now, I've been doing some digging, matching up a lot of what was said in this latest indictment by the feds, and a lot of really interesting things are coming back that I'm recollecting. Now, I will say this. I remember when Diddy went on this whole little rant in 2019 where he said that, you know, he spent several hours crying his eyes out and he just needed to get it off his chest and just, you know, let things go. So it seems like this man has been going through a lot. I think he knew that this day was eventually going to come. When I go back and I think about all the random shit that he used to post and that and I would always call out like it's so insincere. So this is a video from 2019 where he claimed that he cried for hours. So I want y'all to watch this. Man, I ain't gonna lie. 
I've been holding a lot of shit in lately. Oh, man, I just had a, had like a three and a half hour cry. Where I just like let, the, let it all out. Or as much as I could tap into. That shit felt great. Sometimes you gotta let that shit out. Just saying to everybody out there, men, women, and child, you know what I'm saying? Don't be, don't be leaving nothing bottled up, you know what I'm saying? Let that thing out. God will be right there and let you know. Come on, let's get up, let's go. But I had me a three and a half hour cry. God is good. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. Now, if you remember, I had posted this next video on my Instagram page. This was around 2020. So remember, everybody was locked down. This was during COVID. This video was very strange to see because one, Diddy looked extremely old. Um, we'd only been on lockdown for like maybe a month and you could see damn near his whole face is gray. He looks stressed. He has crystals there. He's burning sage. So in this video, he's talking about evil spirits trying to stop his intentions and he looks like he's being haunted by the spirit of Biggie. And I remember posting this back then and I was attacked by this man in the comment section who was like, you know, you're just overly mean to him and you know, how dare you shame him? And it's like, looking back on all this, I think he knew his time was coming. His time was up. Let's not forget the year or two before this was the Me Too movement, the Time's Up movement, and he knew eventually his time would come. And so you have him sitting here burning sage and Palo Santos. He got the crystals in there. He's talking about God. He's literally mixing a bunch of traditional religions with Christianity. The whole thing was just weird. And then, like I said, he looked like he didn't get a shot of adrenochrome because we had only been in lockdown for a month. I need my, my Palo Santos. Palo Santos. God and bless us through this situation. Bless our health care workers in the front lines. Bless our elderly. Bless people all over the world. It's not just a Wherever you act, thing is happening all over the world. Bless everybody. And please forgive us. Because when you forgive us, then you would have sent the cure or it would have been through, through, through your way. And we would have learned. We would have learned the lesson. So God, please come to the rescue. Amen. So in this next video, this was like in 2022, he's once again burning sage and he's putting the sage all around him. But if you notice, he makes sure to really hit his private area. It's almost like he's trying to burn away or get rid of whatever is manifesting around his private area. You know, again, these, these are the activities of a big dick deviant, okay? So y'all go ahead and check out this video. Uh, yeah, get that thing right. Here we go. Yeah. Not on the special, the special, the special crown. All right, so you guys just saw that clip and you guys just saw where he was particularly put in the sage. Now, another video came to mind after this whole IV situation. If you guys remember, there's not one but two different videos of Diddy talking about how he has to go get an IV drip. And this was really popular um, about maybe a year or two ago with a lot of celebrities talking about getting these IV hydration drips. They would shout out these different clinics and, you know, instead of taking your vitamins and drinking teas, you can just get an IV drip. And so a lot of people thought that's what it was about. He was just promoting another clinic. He was just promoting, you know, not being dehydrated, you know, hydration. But now with this lawsuit coming out, it's very sinister. Not only in this first video, he's talking about the IV drip with his mother, Janice, who then kisses him in the mouth. He's talking about taking her to the strip club, how she can put her hands on the ground. Um, I'm assuming with her ass up. 
they're talking like they're boyfriend and girlfriend instead of mother and son. This woman is damn near 100 years old, okay? And she's talking like this is her man. She's kissing him on the lips. The whole interaction is just weird and uncomfortable. It gives very ancestral vibes. And it makes me feel like, is the mother also a part of the freak-offs? And remember, that was part of the NDA, is that nobody could speak about his mother or Justin. I have to sign an NDA that I will never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs Music, or EMI, or Sony ever in public. Justin has been named in a lawsuit. The mother hasn't been named in any lawsuits, but I wonder if she was also helping to, you know what I'm saying, procure girls. She was also bootleg just slaying Maxwell to Diddy. Because the way she's acting and carrying on is really disturbing. So I want y'all to go ahead and check this video out. I love you. I love you too. Come on, freshly dipped though. <laughs> Did y'all peep that? The mother has on white nail polish. Just like Carisha be wearing white nail polish. If you remember, in the lawsuit, Cassie said that Diddy forced the women around him to wear white nail polish because it looked good during the freak-offs. So it's very interesting that his mother is wearing the same white nail polish. Yeah, for real. Mark Duke know how to have a good time. There's an incident house playing. The outside moving and shaking, baby. She come with me to strip club. I don't care. For real. It's my dog. You know, I want to live life. We out here moving and grooving. So my mom told me, she just said, keep moving, baby. Keep moving. She don't stop. She could touch, she could touch um, the floor with her palms, you know? Flat. Flat. Oh. <laughs> Take pew, pew, pew. Nasty bitch. So now this next video, um, this came out about two years ago. And um, in this video, he's talking about how he's tired, he was in the field, and then he says he was at booby trap. And basically, he's dehydrated and he needs an IV. So remember, in this lawsuit, they're saying that after freak-offs, him and the victims will receive IV fluids to recover. But remember, in the Little Rod lawsuit, Little Rod was talking about how Diddy was using him and others to procure girls from Booby Trap. The producer whom Diddy hired in August 2022 helped craft several songs on his R&B love album, Off the Grid, claims in the lawsuit that Diddy groped him and forced him to engage in sex acts with sex workers. Jones also claims that he was ordered to recruit sex workers from Booby Trap on the River, a Miami strip club, and bring them back to Diddy's Star Island home. And then we have the video of him talking about he's dehydrated, he was out all night at Booby Trap. So unless you live in Miami, you may not realize that what he's talking about is a strip club. People might be thinking he went hunting or something like that and set traps, no. This food was set in human traps, okay? So that video may come back to bite him in the ass. So I had a long night last night. I was in the field, you know, was promoting. I was at Booby Trap, um, promoting the brands. I was not there for the, for, the, for the festivities at Booby Trap. I was promoting the brands, and I'm just waking up, so I know I look so crazy and dehydrated, but I must go to work. A day with Diddy. Dehydration, the solution. Now, another thing that I find very interesting is that Foxy Brown, who's usually quiet, because like I said, a lot of these celebrities are not talking right now. Remember today, even Kevin Lyles, he announced that he was stepping down as the 300 Entertainment CEO. He claims it's time to pass the torch. A lot of people are saying that he might be running off to Bali to go be with his friend Russell Simmons because this whole industry is about to be turned upside down. And I believe that something is getting ready to hit the fan because as we all know, Foxy Brown doesn't say a whole lot. You know, Foxy Brown tends to mind her business and, you know, chill with her daughter. But Foxy Brown took to her social media page and she wrote the follow. She says, shit's about to really get crazy. Why would Foxy randomly say that? So now a lot of people are putting two and two together and saying that 
if Diddy is looking at, you know, he's looking at several years in prison with all these allegations, that if he ends up getting locked up, he's gonna take a lot of people down with him. So now once again, the conversation about Jay-Z is, is being put back out in the forefront. And people are talking about how Jay-Z had underage relations with Foxy Brown when she was 15. This has been talked about for years. So it sounds like Foxy may know something that we all may not know as of yet. Y'all check out these clips. I think it's time for us to address the elephant in the room. R. Kelly was the first corporately sponsored pedophile. Everybody knew. Once it came out on R. Kelly, Jay-Z fled the scene. The point was he knew all the time. For 20 years, Jay-Z refused to speak out against R. Kelly, but his former partner, Dame Dash, won't stay silent. Aaliyah is key to everything. Aaliyah and I were very serious. We talked about getting married, so I know exactly what went on. She would be like, no, that's a bad, bad man. R. Kelly did indeed marry his protege, the 15-year-old singer Aaliyah Houghton. Like, Aaliyah was like the sacrificial lamb for all that. 22-year-old rising star Aaliyah has been killed in a horrific plane crash. It's a pain that you don't, couldn't understand. It changed you, turned you into a monster. When Dame was at his lowest, Jay committed the ultimate betrayal. I had so much trust in my, my brother, but he did things that I thought he would never do. So what you think I felt all these years? For 20 years, R. Kelly's power protected him. At that time, we did not look hard enough. Remember Aaliyah's album cover? AJ ain't nothing but a number. Sitting back there like perv master. I mean, I wasn't there. You know, I ain't have nothing to do with that. They made a song together called Not Guilty. Anybody that knows what happened to my girl that f with me should not be f with home. Period. Even as new allegations came out, Jay looked the other way. Kelly is accused of videotaping himself having sex with an underage girl. Prosecutors maintain the girl in the video was as young as 13 when it was made. I mean, I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know that. Like, I know I ain't have nothing to do with it. I'm going to expose somebody that we all forget about. Y'all see this picture of Jay, <laughs> Jay-Z with Aaliyah when she was underage? Y'all forgot about Jay, huh? We only know about Damon Dash messing with Aaliyah and, uh, and R. Kelly. But that ain't the only one that Jay had when she was underage. Yeah, I remember Fox Brown and Jay. Ain't no woman like the one I got. No one could love you better. <laughs> Before that song came out, we used to hear it. I used to tell shit. I was like, Sean Carter is worse. Uh oh, oh man. He's smarter. He's patient. Jay-Z was the last person to see Big L alive. Wait, so this Big L person is not living on this earth no more. He's been dead for years. Foxy Brown was Jay-Z when she was 15 he was 27. Allegedly a romantical thing. It's, it's all right, I'll say alleged, but we know, we know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce. <laughs> The van would go to Maryland. We'd go anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Fox is she's 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 a baby, but she listens to me. You know what I mean? She's tough. You know what I mean? She she's a strong. She's a strong. She's a brat, but she listens to. Me. All right, see, so I just saw that montage concerning Jay Z. So it sounds like right now the industry's in shambles. That's why a lot of folks aren't talking. They're trying to see how this is going to play out. But you know, like I said months ago. Once Homeland Security runs down, once federal agents run down, they have an open and shut case. The feds have a 97% conviction rate. And I don't see him skating away from this. He can put all the baby oil he wants to put on himself, but I don't see him slipping away from this. And I'm glad that the judge denied his bail. Why give him bail? Why allow him to bond out knowing he's going to hop in a plane, go to Bali and never come back? So I just wanted to give y'all that update. I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Do y'all agree with Foxy that shit's about to hit the fan? And a lot more people may get held to task. Let me know what you guys think about Diddy being denied Bond as well. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to hit the video with a like. Feel free to share the video and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.